Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for being here today. My name is Andrea Peluso. I'm the Executive Director of Family Forward. Thank you. We have a lot to celebrate today. I'm so glad you're here. I want to thank every single one of our Time to Care Oregon Coalition partners for all of your work. And also all of the members of Fair Shot for All. And every single one of you that put in time, shared your experiences, and made such a huge difference in finally getting us to this bill signing today. Um, we are so proud that today, Oregon is signing into law the most inclusive and accessible law in the country. Yay. This is a law that covers all the working Oregonians we can. It provides job protections to everyone who qualifies. It provides a, progress, a progressive wage replacement. We're the first state in the nation to offer 100% wage replacement to our lowest wage earners. <laughs> this bill expands the definition of family to honor all types of family relationships. It covers more purposes for leave, parental, family, and medical leave, but also safe leave for survivors of domestic violence and sexual assault. It has one of the lowest eligibility thresholds in the country. It allows for non-consecutive leave, which is critical for those of us providing care to our aging family members and those who need ongoing long-term care. It provides benefits that are portable between jobs, and it's one that pools the contributions of both employers and employees because we all benefit, and it does so much more. It will take a few years to get this program off the ground, but when we do, we will finally be demonstrating with our investments how important the work of caregiving is to our families and to our state. It will be showing that us uh, supporting the people who are still mostly women who take care of our children, our elders, our families, and our communities, chipping away at the wage and other economic disparities that so many face because of their caregiving responsibilities. We will finally allow for all of those who give birth to recover and bond with the baby, ensuring that 25% of us are no longer going back to work within two weeks of a child being born. We'll make sure that more of us can prioritize our health and healing. We'll make sure that men can be supported in taking leave, parental leave, but also other forms of family leave. Allowing them to connect with and care for a family too, and also reducing the workplace stigma and discrimination that too many working women face because of their caregiving responsibilities. And we will support families across the state in helping our elders to age with dignity and with the support of those they love around them. This bill has always been about our families, about how each of us deserves to be able to be there for our family when they need us the most about how much better off we'll be as a state when we make space for caring to happen. Thank you so much to each of you for everything that you did to make history today and for making a better future possible for every one of us. I'd like to welcome Maggie Viveros and then a Amy Donahue to the podium to share their remarks. Hi, my name is Maggie Viveros and I live in Salem and just before my 16th birthday I began to feel so ill, very ill that I was hospitalized for um, the first year. The stress and uncertainty that this chronic illness brought to my family was devastating. My mother, who is a farm worker, single mother, had to figure out how to take care of me and my siblings at the same time. She works through different farm labor contractors throughout the year, contractors that offer no benefits and an hourly wage that can vary from contract to contract, but for the most part only pays minimum wage. She easily used up the 40 hours of sick leave guaranteed by, law, by, by state law on my first visit to the hospital. As someone with a chronic illness, I have had my fair share of hospital stays, but the, but the, but the pain is not in the stay itself, but it's in the thought that my mother the one who keeps the roof over my head can lose her job and everything that she has worked for while making sure that I am able to recuperate. Someone who is ill, for someone, when someone is ill, the priority must be remission. 
Mothers shouldn't have to worry about missing work when they are just trying to take care of their family. Families with children that have a chronic illness like mine have suffered enough, and the last thing we need is added weight to our shoulders. When Oregon passed the best paid family, family <laughs> medical leave bill in the country, my eyes welled up with tears because I remember those families who read their testimonies at a hearing with me one night because our struggles, and because our struggles were heard and a helping hand was extended. The impact that these situations have on, working, on hardworking mothers like mine and every child and adult <laughs> recuperating is tremendous. And Oregon has heard our prayers and answered them. Thank you. Good morning and welcome. What an awesome day this is. Uh, my name is Amy Donahue and I'm a principal here at Bora Architects. We are very happy to host all of you on this momentous day as we sign this bill. Uh, my partners and I four years ago decided to implement a paid family leave policy for our 65 employees. Six weeks of paid leave at 60% of salary. And since that time, more than a dozen people have taken time to care for their newborns. In fact, this year we have six Bora babies that have been born, all boys, so look out. Uh, but you know, other people have also taken time to care for themselves after surgery, to grieve for a loved one. And I think the most important part of that story is that each and every one of them has come back to work, which obviously has had a significant impact on their financial health, but also on the financial health and creative success of our firm, as we've been able to retain the experience of our many talented people, our family, really. So as we adopted our policy, we were very pleased to see other architecture and engineering, engineering firms follow suit. And as those numbers grew, our resolve to make this a statewide policy grew with them. I was willing to talk about paid family leave to anyone who wanted to listen and to many who did not want to listen. <laughs> we made phone calls, we hosted parties, we wrote letters, testified in front of Senate and House committees. And it was while I was testifying in front of one of those committees that I said, you know, all Oregonians deserve access to paid family leave, not just the architects. And I'm very happy today to see, as Governor Brown signs this into legislation, we will have it. And it will be the most inclusive in the nation. So I want to thank all of you. I want to thank the legislators who voted yes uh, to this policy. I want to thank you. I also want to thank many of you in the room and many outside of this room who worked so tirelessly for so many years. This has been a dream for a very long time. I am so pleased to be an Oregonian today and very happy to join the nine other, eight other states and the District of Columbia uh, in <laughs> offering paid family leave. So thank you very much for coming and let's celebrate. Buenos dias. Good morning, everyone. My name is Teresa Alonso Leon. I represent District 22, which covers Whitburn through the north part of Salem. It is an honor to be celebrating a victory for, for all Oregonians on this very historic day. Some of you may or may not know, but during my last campaign, I had my appendix removed. I think it happened sometime around October. The universe has silly ways to make you rest. During my recovery, my mother took a week off to care for me. Her job is being a farm worker, and they didn't offer family paid and medical leave. As a result, she only got paid for one day that week that she helped me recover. Stories like this, and you heard one earlier, are a common occurrence in the farm worker community, and most often may make hard and heart-wrenching decisions. For farm workers who don't have year-round jobs, they often work seasonally and earn low wages. So any interference of this fragile stream of income is simply unaffordable as they often struggle to get ahead. As a member of the interim work group on paid family and medical leave, I worked hard with fellow legislators and partners over the last few years to present and pass policy. It has been a long journey to ensure that this policy included every single Oregonian no matter how their family is composed, and no matter where they work. It is our duty as lawmakers to ensure protections for all Oregon families and to propose and implement laws 
that further assist all Oregonians in a time when they, need, when they most need it. Many of our communities are just one paycheck away from losing their stability that they worked so hard to gain. House Bill 2005 serves to demonstrate our continued support towards working families who would otherwise be forced to decide between paying their bills and taking care of sick loved ones or, this, or themselves. I'd like to thank all of those who worked hard over the past years on helping pass this family and medical paid leave. It was only achieved by rat grassroots organize, organizing and the continued support of partners and groups, such as Family Forward Action and Family Forward Oregon. Thank you all for all your support. Now I have the distinct honor um, of introducing one of our Oregon champions, Governor Kate Brown. Holy smokes, there's a lot of people here, and that's a really good thing. I'm very, very proud to be making Oregon history today. I think most of you know I got my start as an advocate for uh, women and their families uh, back in 1991. And one of the bills I worked on during that legislative session, I worked on with a coalition, they were all women advocates. Um, and the bill was family medical leave. And when Governor Barbara Roberts signed that bill into law, Oregon became one of the first states in the entire country to make sure that parents could stay home and take care of their children or other uh, loved family members without losing their job. But we knew back then that it wasn't enough and we knew we needed to keep fighting to make sure that thousands of families could take advantage of this very important policy. I happened to also be the Senate Majority Leader when we had a vote on, in, on this very issue in 2007, and I saw Diane Rosenbaum. I know she was a champion then, and I know she's a champion now. Um, but that vote didn't end very happily on the Senate floor. Uh, we lost paid family leave by one vote. So I am extremely grateful for this incredible coalition of advocates. Uh, the work uh, that legislators did across the aisle and around the state to make this happen. I want to say a quick thank you. I don't see her here, but uh, Speaker Tina Kotek for her leadership. Let's give her a round of applause. And, um, and Sandy McDonough from Oregon Business and Industry. Is she here? Let's give her a round of applause. You all did it. We all did it working together. And we did it for the mother whose seven-year-old son had to have emergency brain surgery. She was fired from her job when she called to tell them she couldn't come into work to that, to that day. We did it for countless Oregonians who are caring for older family members, oftentimes balancing caring for young children and working jobs outside the home. We did it for people like a member of my staff who took a significant financial hit to provide childcare for his newborn daughter. He is a state employee, and his husband is a librarian at a private college uh, that will remain nameless, that has a half a billion dollar endowment. <laughs> this famously liberal college offers paid leave for parenting for faculty, but not for members of its staff. That is, its administrative as assistance, custodial staff, and that's right, it's librarians. This college decided that its lowest paid employees were best suited to bear the financial burden of caring for newborn children. Well, I think this bill has changed that, and I think that's a really good thing. In short, this law is going to allow families, however they are composed, to care for each other in times of need. But the, the harsh reality is we are certainly behind the eight ball on this as a nation. The fact remains that Germany passed paid maternity leave not in 2003, not in 1983, but in 1883. <laughs> the U.S. is one of only two countries in the world that does not provide paid maternity leave to working mom mothers. Three out of four dads take less than one week of leave after the birth of a new child. In fact, nearly 60% of low-income fathers take zero weeks of paid leave. 
families, all of our families, regardless of how they're composed, deserve time to love and care for each other. So I'm extremely proud that Oregon can be a leader amongst all of the states. And in fact, uh, the Huffington Post called it the, quote, best family leave law in the entire United States. So, and that's a damn good thing, and it's about damn time we sign this bill. <laughs>